evening, and welcome to Law Talk, the show that brings the law, the Constitution, and the events of the day each month. Tonight, Mark, what are we covering? Well, first of all, we're going to talk about the Mod Squad. That's four Congress ladies who are in a spat with uh, their own leader, Nancy Pelosi, and also with Trump. Um, then we have Mueller time, which is, uh, you know, the blockbuster we were waiting for. For two years. Breathlessly, <laughs> and then that, that finally came off. We'll talk a little bit about that. <clears throat> and then we have Google Psychops, and Google is big brother and company. Okay, well, I, I'm going to be looking forward to all three of those, but let's start with the, the four horsemen of the progressive movement. What do we got going with these ladies? Well, I think it's pretty interesting. And they've got the Mod Squad, and these are all younger um, ladies who are Democrats. And uh, I think they are pretty um, adept at working in social media, right? And I think a lot of other people in Congress have been in Congress like for like 300 years. Right. You know, and they're having like scratching stuff, charcoal on clay tablets and stuff. And the Mod Squad's just running rings around them. Well, let's see. The, the four women that we're talking about are Rashid Talib, uh, Ayanna Presley, mm -hmm. Alexander Ocasio Cortez, and Iham Omar. Now, these four came in with the, during the last election, 2018. And what's interesting about it, they were part of the 27 candidates funded by George Soros, all progressive, across the nation, and these four made it. And what's interesting about it, not only do they have one thought, it's going to be Green Deal, no fuel, this, that. Everything is about the most progressive left movement that anyone in the Democratic Party's ever seen. And I'm a Democrat, and I'm shocked. So, Mark, tell me what these four are really trying to do. Well, the one I invited on the show was Ilhan Omar. And I actually contributed some money to her campaign, and I wrote some nice little notes to her, and I said, come on, law talk, and she didn't want to come on. So, because I thought the best thing would be to have them explain their own positions, right? Because it's kind of controversial. A lot of people say that they kind of speak in code about Israel and one thing or another, and, you know, and I would say, well, the best thing would have them explain to themselves. So, I guess we kind of do our own inter interpretation here, but let's face it, we really don't know. They haven't been on the scene that long. We haven't really seen what they voted on. We've seen what they proposed. Most of the things that they proposed, I don't think ever made it to the floor or made it through committee. Well, in so fact, it's, it's a little yeah. bit of a mystery, really. Well, what actually, after. what they've all come in, in with, with is a nearly identical agenda. Omar and Tlaib are both the two first Muslim women ever elected to Congress. Right. And uh, Tlaib is a Palestinian, and Omar is from Somalia. Right. So, their, their, their feelings about Israel are pretty well stated in the news, and they continue to keep charging up the dialogue with their anti-Israel speech. Well, I mean, I think one thing they brought up, which really got the Israeli faction upset, is that <clears throat> there's a, maybe a third of the people in the Congress, or a quarter of the people in the Congress, are Israeli dual citizens. In other words, they can go to Israel anytime, and they can have uh, no extradition, and so they're Israeli citizens. And so what Omar is saying is like, you have these people by bloodline um, who are Israeli citizens, and they're voting in the U.S. Congress. And then the Israeli citizens are saying, no, no, it's religious, but I think it's, it's more like DNA than it is religious. So I think that's the conflict is like, is this DNA, which is the rule, or is it religious, which is... I mean, anyone can switch religions anytime they want, and a lot of people are atheists, I think, mostly, um, in the Congress, anyway. Um, so anyway, wait, wait that, minute, that's, me... that's what's kind of confusing about it. Well, what's, what's really kind of sad about that is that there, Israel is the only democratic country in the Middle East. And both, both of the backgrounds for Tlaib and Omar are diametrically opposed to the existence of well, Israel. Well, when she got her new office, she covered up Israel with a little piece of paper on the map <laughs> on the map yeah covered up the map but also that but also she kind of plays both sides of it and i think she does it uh, kind of trolling the israelis because she said you no know, then she said well you know 
the stuff on the border is like a concentration camp. You know, Israelis have a big deal about that. And, and then, so the, then she's bringing that up while she's against Israelis, and that's kind of their, one of their sacred cows, you know, talking about that. And so, so that really pissed him off. And so, and then, so the, I think Pelosi tried to bring Rainer in, right? And they, they had a little meeting where they kind of smiled before the break and kind of made up. But I think what Pelosi says, you don't have that many votes, right? I've got a lot of votes, you don't have very many. And I think what, um, you know, Ilan Omar is saying, well, we have a bigger Twitter following or a bigger, bigger Facebook. We have a bigger, bigger social media following. So we actually have more future impact because you don't have any following. So well, that's the argument. Okay, well, that's, that's Omar and Tlaib. But let's talk about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, which is actually the poster girl for all of this. Now, she's the one that came in with the Green New Deal. Uh -huh. Eliminate flights, eliminate cows, eliminate anything that has to do with meat, eliminate oil, eliminate coal, and we should all be driving our cars with little sails on the top or solar power because there will be no more fossil fuel. So the only problem with that is we'll be the only country in the world that's doing that, and as a result, we'll go from a multi-trillion dollar economy Back to the Stone Age. Well, you've got to understand that I think if she's Soros funded and Soros is in with the guitars, and I think that's how you pronounce it. That's Not correct. like a guitar, but guitar. Guitars. 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 And they're also in with the Israelis somewhat. And the Saudis are one group, right? And the Saudis want to sell oil to us. And so for years and years, the Bushes and the Clintons took millions, if not billions, of dollars <laughs> from the Saudis to stop drilling oil here, right? Yeah. And now Trump is saying, no, you can drill oil. Now we're, now we're exporting oil, right? And so the, the Saudis are going crazy here. So they're pouring money like crazy into Congress, like, stop this oil drilling. Are you trying to tell me the Green New Deal to stop oil, oil fracking and natural gas and coal is a conspiracy by no, no, Saudi no, no, Arabia? No, what I'm saying is they, it's, it's, it's to stop oil being drilled in the USA. And because the way that you make money in the world, as people have known for centuries, is the most profitable thing is a war, right? And so if you're bringing oil from Saudi Arabia, there's lots of excuses to have a war over shipping. I mean, if you're pumping oil in Oklahoma and delivering it to Nebraska, you don't really there's need no a war. There's no chance for the war. It's not like the Straits <laughs> of Hormuz exists yeah, yeah. in Kansas City or yeah, something. Yeah, so I mean, like, we spent $10 trillion on the Iraq war, right? Um, we spent another. A lot of people made some money on that. Well, just even the interest on that, which was also <laughs> Israeli. And so and then they try to start a war in Syria, and they want to start a war in Iran. All those are cash cows. And if we're drilling our own oil, we don't need the Strait of Hormuz. No, we don't need it. In fact, right it's now, a, we have no oil going to the Strait of Hormuz yeah, we don't coming need to us. In fact, we mm -hmm. are just an exporter. And so the best news about the United States is now. We're energy independent. Yeah. Now, when you look at these but, I mean, four, we're, they're we're just trying to take us back. No, no, but I think what you got to understand, it's very good because, you know, Soros is hooked up with Israel, and Israel hires Ilhan Omar to attack Israel, and they're kind of like the controlled opposition. The, the end goal is the same. You know, don't have any oil in the United States, so we got to bring it from the Middle East, so we have a, lots of excuses for wars, I would think. Because that's where the money is, if you're yeah, following the money. I just, I just don't see how that's really working here. Because, well, well, because what I see is, I, number one, the Green New Deal is not about saving the environment. Well, we can it's take about a, total control no, of the population. Can, but you can take we a, know better than well, that. We can take a train to uh, Hawaii. Take a train to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, that's well, uh, yeah. Chelsea Gabbard was asking, well, how, what train's leaving from <laughs> Washington, D.C. to uh, Oahu? Yeah, I don't think there is one. So, yeah, there's, there's some things like that. But I think really what you're trying to do is put, 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 they're trying to put the toothpaste back in the tube on the oil deal. It's a little late on that. No, no. no now, fracking's th doing pretty well here. Yeah, well, I'm just thinking also, look at the price of oil. And what about that pipeline yeah, I mean, well, coming from Canada? I, I mean, mean, we're I mean, at the I mean, point I mean, right I mean, now. No, but I mean, oil was up at $150 a barrel. And now it's like 60, 50? No, it's 50. 50. I mean, you can't have a war over that. You know, you got to get oil up to 125, 130 before you throw in another $10 trillion war. I think we should move on to our second <laughs> okay. subject. We're going to watch these four because I know that we're going to hear a lot well, out think, of them. I think that they really have a big following, and the following they have on social media may, may make them pretty important. Okay, what's our second topic for the night, Mark? Well, the second time is Mueller time. Mueller time! And now this was a blockbuster. It was advertised as impeach Trump and... 
da 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 you know, and then... The well, Democrats. didn't CNN make a whole industry for at two least years. two years and talking I, about how Trump will be impeached? He colluded. He obstructed. Well, what they had, and we did shows on that better than day. Even <laughs> well, the thing is, originally there was Stellar Win, and 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 Obama did Stellar Win. Now Stellar Win has never gotten the news, and it never will be. But Stellar Win is it's a top secret uh, yeah, agenda. Yeah. Okay, Stellar Win is if you if ever, someone's going to do a nuclear bomb, a dirty bomb in New York City. Then you don't need any Fourth Amendment rights, right? So that's Stellar Wind. It's espionage. So when Obama started out after Trump, he did Stellar Wind, but he was also doing it against Scalia, Rand Paul. So he was he probably was surveilling like ten or fifteen different people. Now that's never going to come out because it's too top secret. And so then after a year or so of that, he dug up enough stuff where they figured out, okay, we can set up this goofball. They had some goofball that they got drunk and. You know, Papadopoulos. He, yeah, Papadopoulos. They got yes, some guy drunk in a bar. And, and by the way, hang on. Him up, yeah. And they had the professor yeah, yeah. that was sent over by <laughs> yeah. Peter Strzok. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, professor yeah. was sent over to get Papadopoulos a few extra glasses of whiskey. Uh, yeah. And he started talking. Yeah, and of he course, he's talking nonsense. But he's not is, even part of no, the Trump but campaign. No, but he's talking something he's been fed, right? He's so been he, fed by he's another been, Yeah, yeah. So he's regurgitating <laughs> stuff that the Stellar Wind people put together. And then now they can do a now they can do a FISA warrant, right? And then they had Comey would sign, you know, anything for the FISA warrant. And uh, then they started this whole. Well, camp. Barack was saying, "Hey, James, I got you a good yeah, job." Let's yeah. go. Hillary, when Hillary's elected, <laughs> you will be the new Attorney General. Right. And so, so anyway, you got the then you had the FISA warrants, were, which were kind of dummied up. And then they thought they'd get something. And, and what they did now, I didn't understand this, and I th think we did a show on it when they were doing the FISA warrants. I'm like, well, the the letter that. Um, Mueller had from Ronstein, or Ros Rosenstein? Rosenstein. Said you were supposed to look into Russian collusion, collusion. which is no such crime as collusion, so it's kind of weird. But I would say Russian espionage, right? In other words, is Trump having dinner with Natasha and Boris? You know, <laughs> you know the, what is that, the good air in, the bad air out? You know, and so, you know, we're, this is a cartoon, of course, and, uh, and I say, well, they can't keep going because this would be... Um, this would be a violation of the uh, what, the key tam. Well, you can't. Yeah, number yeah. one, you no, can't. You, yeah, but why then, number but, one? You're not supposed to open any of this information up when there's a U.S. citizen. Well, it was the You're NSA. not supposed no, to be the doing NSA, the head of the international NSA. espionage against, well, let NSA. alone a campaign. Well, the NSA guy, I forget his name. I think it was Williams or something, but some kind of admiral. He noticed Clapper. that. Clapper. No, no, no. But the guy on that that cued, clued. Trump into it. Ah. He noticed that all these people were getting on masks. He's going, these people aren't. There's a, they're all Republicans. Why are they getting a mask? You know, and there's like, okay, Rand Paul's getting a mask. Scalia's getting a mask. You know, everyone who votes against is getting a mask. Or Democrats. And so he went to Trump Tower and said, you know, you're being bugged. And so Trump said, yeah, I'm being. Well, what's up. interesting, you remember when uh, when President Trump actually said. Trump um, Tower's bugged. No, he's having being wiretapped. We're being wiretapped, and everyone started laughing at yeah, him like yeah. he's an idiot because nobody uses wiretaps anymore. But he said in the sense of wiretapping, yeah. surveillance. But he was using that as a generality. Well, and so, but the point of the matter is, so that was the Pfizer warrants, and then they kind of drummed up the stuff, and what they were hoping. Now, what turned out, what confused me is like, how can they keep doing this? I mean, this is key time. They're going to have to pay back triple time. It was 30000 so they'd owe 90K. But then it turned out there was a secret, secret memo <laughs> that Rosenstein gave Mueller that said, just get anything you can, you know, <laughs> go out there and find me a crime, you know? And so get Trump on however, because I mean, remember the untouchables. The guy goes, goes arrest him. He goes, what are we going to arrest him for? Just, just like, go arrest him. You know? <laughs> so basically Rosenstein says, go arrest Trump no matter what. And they looked around, they really couldn't find anything in two years, and they did three investigations. They looked through like 60 million pages. Well, and they hang on, it. and then on top of that, uh, uh, Mr. Mueller hired 16 pit bulls yeah, that are all well, anti-Trump, all no, but pro I mean, Hillary, no, but the one, all everything. The one that really matters is Weissman. Weissman, Weissman yeah, has been pit bull. We Weissman. Well, by the way, Weissman was at Hillary's inaugural wind party oh, yeah. when he found out that she lost. So well, Weissman said, I am going to get him. <laughs> well, talk about working for Soros. I mean, <laughs> Weissman's his lawyer. And so Weissman has framed more people, destroyed more exculpatory evidence. I mean, he's got in trouble. I mean, he is like, like I guess you can call it pit bull, but 
He's basically, I would say. He's a dirty pit bull. No, I would say he's Soros' lap dog. He That's is. He's, he's Soros' lap dog. He's no pit bull. He's just like, oh, oh, go ahead. And he goes and bites people. And it's like, your dog bit me. Well, Soros owns me. Oh, well, it's okay. I'll, it's I'll, okay. It's I, a Soros yeah, dog. I, it's a Soros dog. Okay, I won't, I won't press charges. So he's in charge of this thing. And, of course, when Mueller says, I don't want to testify, the Democrats. Well, Nadler, <laughs> don't forget. Chairman Nadler. Well, Jerry Nadler. Works Jerry for, Nadler. He works for Soros, too. He's a clown for Soros. <laughs> and so when he gets up there, and, he, and, and, and Mueller says, I don't want to testify because there's really nothing there. And uh, you, we, you, we've had witnesses who didn't want to testify, right? Well, you, you never want to ask them. No, can you imagine subpoenaing your own witnesses? Okay, you've got a friendly witness that refused to testify for you. You don't want to go up on the stand. So they had to subpoena him? Well, yeah. wait a minute. If you're take, let's take it back when uh, Mueller did the nine-minute <laughs> debacle statement where he said, "And everything's in the book. Everything's in my report." <laughs> yeah. And then he said, "I could not exonerate the president for obstruction." Well, there's one problem here, as you know, as an attorney that does criminal law, it's not up to the district attorney to exonerate anybody. It's up to the district attorney to determine whether or not there's sufficient evidence. The prosecute or not prosecute. And what if, Mueller has said more about why he didn't bring any charges than actual any charges ever brought. Well, that 10 minute thing was he was trying to appease his handlers, right? His he was, handlers. He was that's trying right. to appease, you know, Soros and give them something they could appease on. And then they said, that's not enough. That's not well, enough. We, so we we're want, bringing you back. Yeah, we're bringing you back. We're going to cross examine And then, gonna, by the way, we, get... we don't care what you look like <laughs> under that. And so what they said is like, well, um, is it, can you indict a sitting president? And he's like, no, you can't because it's sovereign immunity, right? You can't indict the king. And, uh, you know, you can't do it. And he goes, and they're like, well, if you could have indicted Trump, would you have indicted him? And he said, well, I never wouldn't, couldn't have not have done it if I never wouldn't have done it ever, done it. <laughs> and I, I never didn't, could have, yeah, if I have done it, done it, wouldn't it? And they're like, what? Can you say that again? He goes, yeah, I never would have kind of done it, wouldn't have done it, da, da, da. And he could have run to this rigmarole. And then, he, then I just think he did a masterful presentation of just playing dumb. Wow, I mean, he, he was I, playing pretty dumb. No, I don't think, he, I don't think he's that dumb. Well, but, but, what I don't yeah. understand is why they asked him questions straight out of <laughs> the second part of the report, which is all obstruction, and he literally goes like this. Oh, that's in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing I is, have never seen anything so amazing no, but I for a guy that's supposed to be a special uh, prosecutor that well, can't no, even well, figure it out. He was friends with Obama and, oh. and Comey. They've been running around for 30 or 40 years, right? Yeah, okay. And I think he's done cover ups all back all, oh, all the way going, to what? He goes back yeah, he goes to, back to Whitewater, yeah, doesn't he? He, does, he, he go goes back. back to Vince Foster, yeah, Whitewater. By Vince Foster. He's the cleanup guy yeah. for the Clinton. Okay, well, we're going to leave the cleanup guy and yeah. we're going to step over. And our third subject is Google and what they're doing to us. Okay. Tell me what's up, Mark. Okay, what's well, this is Google Psychops. And so I call Google, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, I call them GIFT, G-Y-F-T. Okay. And I put them all kind of in one, one group. Okay. And the reason is that it's kind of like you have the New York Times and the Washington Post and CNN, MNBC, Fox News. They're all owned by the same guys, right? They're all owned by the same group, right? There's no news, and the same guys who own Fox News and the New York Times and the Washington Post and CNN. Well, and, it's not quite well, like that. Much, no, well. it's not. Well, anyway, but there, but there, no, there. no, no. But I will tell you, if well, you, if if you, you eliminate the, Fox News, the rest are kind no, of owned but, by the but, same but gang. Fox got bought off just recently. But, but anyway, if you look at no, the... No, Fox Movies got bought okay, off, not but, in the news. Well, okay, we'll agree to disagree on that. But if you look at the corporation who owns the corporation who owns the corporation, mm -hmm. that all comes back to the same guys, right? Pretty much the same guys, basically, Soros is the paymaster for these guys. Anyway, so they're all owned by the same thing. And you've noticed probably when you're out with your friends, you're talking about and say, well, I think I should buy some new shoes, right? And you get home, you've got shoe ads, right? Mm -hmm. So Google of hears course. everything you say. Well, that's your why phone. you don't want to have those little Alexas in your house. Because no, they, even that's your, your... no, but your cell phone. It hears everything on your cell phone, even when it's off, unless you take the battery out. But now you can't take the battery out. So they hear, they know everything you say, right? So they know what unless you... Unless you don't carry a cell phone. Unless you don't carry a cell phone, but you're with someone who does, and they can recognize your voice. So that, it's basically the thought police. And so what Google has done more recently, before they maybe censored, you know, 5 or 10% of conservative thought, 
But then after Trump won, I mean, if you look at the Providence Veritas things, I mean, they had a Google was like, oh, you know, my gosh, we got to stop. Well, wait a minute. They had a whole session where everyone's <laughs> yeah, crying. Yeah, yeah. They had the, the, the CEO of Google was crying <laughs> well, they in said front that, of his whole upper staff. <laughs> what are they going to do? Uh, you know, but they're, they, so, you know, before they kind of try to make it look good, you know, it's like when Soros reads the election, you know, he tries to make it 60 to 40 percent. They don't want to get like 99 percent. And bribe everybody. Oh, then, it's, then it's like yeah. another totalitarian yeah. third world country. And then it's Venezuela. So Venezuela. You, know, you, you gotta make the rigged thing not look so rigged. And so, but now they don't care. Now, now they just want to win. Now, conservative thought on Google is banned probably at 98% or 99%. Yeah. So where do people go? They go to Parlay, which is Parler, Parlay, for Facebook. And then you have to go to BitChan for YouTube, right? And Google, you can go to DuckDuckGo. But um, and those things aren't that well supported because no, because they're being crushed. Well, because it's like when uh, wait a minute, it's like when AT and T controls yeah. Pac Bells, all the Pac Bells. Right, right. Let's be really clear. Google is what Pac Bell was right. when they broke it into six little. Well, the thing about, you got to understand there is 47 CFR 230 that makes Google more powerful than the president of the United States, makes Google more powerful than the Congress. It makes Google not probably as powerful as the banks, but it makes them pretty dang powerful. And what is that? That gives them immunity. And so there was a, about five or six years ago, this was passed, right? And the idea it was of, under Obama. It was under Obama. And it's like, we're going to make you like a utility, like PG&E. You, if you want information, if you want to look at an encyclopedia, you got to come to us. If you want to say something to the outside world, it's got to go through us. So we're going to control all thought that comes to you all information comes to you, and all thought that you put out into the world, we're going to control. And in exchange for having this absolute control over thought, being the thought police of the planet, you have to guarantee that people have equal access to the pop public square. Well, that lasted like 10 minutes. Well, that didn't, that's never <laughs> been in place. So Google's never given anyone equal access no, to the public they, square. Before they used they, to give like well, 90%. Wait a minute. They made it look good. But the thing is, now it's completely flipped. After yeah. Trump won, it's like, there's no well, more pretense. Remember, there used to be something called Yahoo. Yeah. Well, the point of the matter is, is that you remember that, right? But I mean, Google. Google visited, over. Uh, yeah, I'm but, but telling Google, you. But Google visited the White House like 300 times. You oh, know, like yeah. once a day. So it's not a question of was 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 Soros running the White House or was Soros running Google or was Soros running both? Probably, right? But they have the same master. So basically, you've got the thought police, and if you look up something now, right? And they see you're looking up something. Like I was looking up some of the Clinton stuff, like out of Mena, when they were like running all the cocaine yeah, in there. Right. And they had I mean, them, a Southern and, Arkansas. Yeah, and they had Mossad was running the security and all that yeah. stuff. Those YouTubes are all gone. Yeah. And so then when I started looking out of that, then they start cutting off other stuff. They go like, oh, we don't want these guys looking here anymore. And so they know who's looking at what, and they'll start to punish you well, see, that's for looking into point. different things. Um, you should know that unless you're looking up. Fluffy the Wonder Dog. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. You might, that you can find <laughs> yeah, all right, day yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, right. Hey, look at Fluffy. <laughs> but if you're looking up Clinton Foundation, <laughs> yeah, right. people <laughs> die. It's all they, gone. It's all gone. There's no, 56 no, suicides I mean, I'm around like them. A year, a year ago, there was probably 30 or 40 of those. Now they're scrubbed. They're, they're all scrubbed. gone. Like, yeah, the El Paso shooter was a, was a Democrat, right? Oh, he's a Democrat. Two hours after the shooting, he's a Republican. He's a, he's a Trump supporter. A so Trump supporter. Just scrubbed. So now they're like, they're not making any pretense at all. Google's a thought police if you think something wrong. And now this guy, uh, Kevin Cernanke, he's the made whistleblower. Some, he said, okay, you look up. Um, you know, Trump, what did Trump write? Well, he, dri he wrote Mon Kempf, he's Hitler. <laughs> Trump is Hitler. And this is on Wikipedia, right? And so it's like, and so he wouldn't complain to his boss about that. So what, did his bo what was his boss? His, uh, his boss is an Indian guy yeah, if that's... Who, who Trump says works for Chinese uh, espionage, right? Um, because and if you look at the writing of Wikipedia now, that's changed in this last couple of years. And I've read, you know, Marx and Engels and Mao Tse Tung. The writing in there is now Mario Te Sung. It's just like, you know, when you read a police report yeah. as a lawyer, you know, and I used to help write, you know, I used to review them when I was on prosecution side. I mean, I can tell whether a sheriff wrote it or whether a local police wrote it or a CHP from looking at a police report, right? Right. And so when I'm looking at Google, I can tell this is Mao Te Sung. This is Mao Te Sung, Marxist 1960s stuff, right? And it's, you know, that now they don't cover it. They used to make it a little Marxist, you know, a little Franklin School. 
a little rabbit dabbit up with some hippy dippy stuff. But now it's like, we don't have time for that. Now it's Mao, 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 you know? So it's total red Chinese. Well, you also, you also have to look at how uh, Google's working with uh, China on right. all the AI. Oh, well, Here we go. They're, they said no to the Pentagon, but yes to the Chinese military. No, no, military. but that's the new 5G. Once they do the 5G, they're going to have model cities. Now, here's what they can do. Now they, they're going to build uh, simitrons of each person so they can figure out what you can do and how to punish you. So right now... If you do something against Soros, for example, you won't be able to publish on YouTube, or you won't be able to do this, or your computer won't get you the information you need. But soon it's going to be like China. Your bank card won't work. You won't be able to get food. You know, I mean, they can quickly change that once they get to 5G. So this is within a year or two. And these guys have no shame at all. This guy, this Kevin Cernanke, he said, well, how come when I look up this stuff, it's always turned around upside down and it's become malice. So Google, the head of Google, the CEO, this Indian guy, or guy from India, he calls the cops and says, oh, Kevin Sernanke, he's, he's going to commit suicide. So, you know, he's in Mountain View having a beer, SWAT team around his house, machine guns, like, are you going to commit suicide? He's like got his hands up, you know? And so that's what Google says. If you miss with him, it's yeah, like... Yeah, but that's when he went to Veritas well, then, and he then, released all the documents well, that's what and he all said. the videos. He said, I'm going to... I'm going to release everything. I'm going to go public so they don't have a good reason that's to bump me They up. have no reason to kill me because yeah. everything's going to be public. And that's the thing with Epstein. What an idiot. He should have just gotten, as soon as they caught him, he should have sat down with a depot, live televised, and just talked for three days. He'd be alive now. And you know what else? But, he should have never been alone, ever. No, the point is he should have publicized right away. Because all these things, remember the girl in, um, in, uh, in the Vegas shooting? So there, was, there were six yeah. shooters, right? Well, she didn't go to public with her depot, and then she died. She's a 20-year-old, got a heart attack the second day. <laughs> I mean, all these people die left and right. You know, I mean, like, it's suicide. It's like... It's well, like, you know what, Mark? I think we're going to leave suicide alone for tonight, and I'm going to tell you, it's been another <laughs> exciting law talk. And so as we sign off, Mark Malakowski and myself, James Barrett, we're looking forward to seeing you again next month with another law talk. We're going to have three more. <laughs> interesting topics. And so, Mark, thank you very much. It's been a fantastic show. It's been a gift. And it's been a gift. Google, it's a, YouTube, yes, Twitter. And I, and I got to tell you, I'm wondering Facebook how long before my car explodes when I turn it on. <laughs> I live in Mountain View. <laughs>